Hi everyone, it's Maddie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to dive into 24A Chanel's pre-fall Metier Da collection, which happened yesterday in Manchester. Uh, I am so excited about this runway. Earlier this week, I put out a video talking about what we might see and today we get to see it and kind of walk through it. I started yesterday analyzing like the early photos that came out and now they're posted to the Chanel website. And so let's review the collection together. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. I'm starting my screen recording here on my phone. Three, two, one. Okay, there we go. Let's dive in with the first look. So the first three looks of the runway, the models actually walked twice. I was like, are they twins? What is going on here? They did the first three looks and then they did, I think the last three or some of the final three looks. And so during the finale, these first three looks didn't walk again. So starting off highly structured tweed sort of looks. This is like a brick gray tweed with a red lining, really cute and like biker shorts underneath. This show kind of goes back to Virginie's roots. So she grew up in Lyons, which is like uh, outside of the main metro area, like not within Paris or anything. It's a smaller kind of manufacturer's, more blue collar town, similar to how Manchester, like Lyons to Paris is as Manchester is to London. And so uh, both towns are well known for like manufacturing textiles, part of, uh, you know, the original DNA of Chanel. Chanel fell in love with uh, the United Kingdom for like their tweeds and just like their rich fabrics. And so we really see a lot of that here, but it's kind of like with that really modern, more feminine, like tight tailoring. So it's like masculine meets feminine. Anyway, so that's a bunch of these first looks with this gray tweed. There's this red tweed set. This one's a little bit more traditional, um, also in kind of like a brick red, which really like evokes the color of the space, which I love. They called this the candy apple green. Whoops, jumping ahead. Okay, so those first three looks are only walked once and we'll see these models again. Um, this orange look is so beautiful. So this, the details of this collection, so these like little silk linings here, it's kind of like blending like with the silk textile, with the wool textile, it's like east meets west. It's really beautiful. I love like these jelly bean colors, orange sherbet. This color really jumped out to me, lilac. And I also feel like this is more of like a, it's kind of like a, working girl sort of look. So it's like the luxury of Chanel, but also like, you know, blue collar worker, maybe not necessarily blue collar, but like office worker, like somebody who's like wearing flats. Like it's a very practical. People like to kind of dish on Virginie being like, oh, it's so wearable, but it's not whimsical like Carl, which I don't actually do not agree with this color for example very whimsical and then we see here this little like bang headpiece very whimsical okay this is referencing i feel like it's obviously a reference to like anime but also kind of like anime meets punk there is a hat atelier i think it's maison michel i don't speak french so ignore me but i think they probably manufactured this piece the Camellias, stunning. Again, we have the bike shorts, which I think are like the little kind of like modern girl twist. Really cute. This was one of my favorite looks. It's like Cher Horowitz. It's like Legally Blonde. It is so cute. I love the contrast of like the silk lining with the textile. I love the tweed. Like it's a very classic houndstooth. The hats are so good. Again, I think it's Maison Michel. This green tweed, also fantastic with the gold detailing. Like, first of all, everything is like impeccably made, impeccably fitted. Like this is like the true heritage of Chanel. Okay, and I hope my camera battery doesn't die. I just saw it go from two to one. So we've got to push through this. This look I already saw, Lesage, um, which is another one of the ateliers. They do the hand woven tweed. Took credit for this tweed, so it's gonna cost a pretty penny, but this very vibrant pink and the contrast with like the 
gray weather, like the gray asphalt, I think is so stunning. This is a more traditional look, but I think all of these hand crocheted edgings, like this is what Metier de, Metier da is all about. So many tweeds to choose from. All right, so we have another Sherbert, this goldenrod, and I love the modern juxtaposition with the like highlighter colored gripoit. Stunning, I'm assuming just to guess that these would all be um, goosens, which is like the atelier that does uh, the gripois or like the metalwork or the jewelry. So then we have a pink one. So it's like, pick your favorite color. There is something here for you or pick your favorite silhouette. There is something here for you. This is a little bit more of a classic silhouette, but with the bracelet sleeve, I feel like it adds a little bit more to it. This brown color, I think is gonna be really trendy for next fall. There's something really rich about it. It's like a really rich brown. The other thing that um, the Ready to Wear advisor at my local boutique was telling me, we were like chatting over text, is that um, in this collection, Virginie actually reuses the same fabric multiple times. And this is because of Chanel's like carbon emissions pledge. Apparently it helps like it's more uh, sustainable to use fewer fabrics per collection because, you know, each one just requires that much more effort to produce. I think it's also really functional for us who shop the collection since you can do a lot more mixing and matching. Okay, so, and I digress because I have to zoom in on this tea caddy menagerie. This is so cute. It's gonna be so expensive, but I love it. I feel like it really, captures the spirit of the location, just like the VW bus was for like surf culture in Los Angeles. This is like, what is more like quintessentially British than tea, right? And kind of like the great equalizer within Britain. I loved this brown set. This is one of the looks that I'm considering. I'm not really sure the use cases for when I would wear it. Like I like that it's separate though, so you can kind of mix and match. And I'm just really drawn to this color. I'm just not sure how it would incorporate into my wardrobe. So this is a really big maybe for me. Okay, now we're getting into the Sherlock Holmes. I will say that Sherlock Holmes is impeccably tailored, but it is very much a Sherlock Holmes look the next few. But you can see what I was talking about, like the repeating fabric patterns. So then there's this one, which like the skirt is and the hat is the same fabric. So you could do like full on full tweed look. Well, this is a dress. So that's the full tweed look, but mix and match. Okay. With the sweater. And um, I think the sweater, I forget the atelier, but there's like a Scottish woolier wool <laughs> um, knit producer that they work with for this as well. Okay, another take, this is maybe more Newsies than it is, uh, what was I saying? Sherlock Holmes. Again, like the repeated fabrics and the different fabrications, just showing what you can do with like a single textile, I think is really cool. This is truly art. I don't know, I haven't seen who's taking credit for this yet. Maybe La Marie, maybe um, Lesage, I don't know, but it looks hand done. I love the contrast of the two colors. Okay, now we're getting more like away from like, that was like working girl. Now we're getting more into like the punk club kid music scene. Manchester was known um, for the punk music scene, a bunch like multi-generational uh, like music influence, influences coming out of Manchester. Um, this again, you can kind of see the influence from um, like Far East styles with like the high collar and the silk. And then also like, okay, Virginie touched this collection. Here's the, our new take on the bib. It's this three bow kind of vest thing over the crushed velvet, very modern. I don't know if that's a dress. It looks like it could be shorts underneath. She, this woman, she loves, she loves a short. I don't know if she's, she might win me over with shorts on this one, I'm, I'm not, Sure, this is so cool. The contrast of the black and red lining and I love the pink bows. This is really, and head to toe leather, like it's very edgy, it's very um, like countercultural, more so than classic. Again, we have like a carpet bag coat. It's like very industrial, like masculine meets feminine with the mini skirt. 
this was one of my favorite looks at the collection. I feel like it's going to be so expensive because it looks completely hand done. And then also you can't see the detail as well on the Chanel website. Um, but the sequin embroidery on this t-shirt, it's like a little teacup. It's so sweet. So cute. I love the like this. If I had all the money in the world, this would be it. I'm scared to know how much that one costs. Again, we're getting into some really intense textiles. The next few kind of like the full on, we've seen the contrasts like pink or red and black, like double sided. And then it's like full on clash where they're all mixed together. So this is like full on clash. This as well, obviously a stunning tweed, beautiful. And it was a little bit lighter on the costume jewelry this time around. There's obviously still some beautiful pieces, but compared to what we saw in cruise and spring summer, I feel like they lightened up on the jewelry a lot, which is interesting. Also, there was a lot more different styles of shoes. Okay, this piece, I wish we could see the detail. This is over a thousand hand-sewn sequin uh, camellia flowers all over it. This is truly walking art. It's um, patchwork leather and then each one of these flowers is like sequins. It's stunning. And then we have another one of those punk bang head pieces. I think it's cool for the runway. I don't know how it would work in real life. Again, hand sewn sequins over like a very classic houndstooth. Stunning. I love the pocket on this one. It's like little, I don't know, it's almost like, look at all these jewels I have in my pocket. It's so sweet. And the tailoring for this collection is just impeccable. We're at look 32, I'm gonna have to speed up here, especially if I don't want my camera to die. All right, this look I really like. It's like androgynous, but still very girly and very wearable as separates. Um, and I like the mix of the different textiles. This is like a very, like, Buy this piece, wear it a million times. Also this sequined houndstooth bag. It's gonna be obnoxiously expensive, but it's so cool looking. Tweed dress with a collar, very virgin -y. Also the bow shoes. I like the idea of the bow shoes, but they do look a little bit like Birkenstocks with bows on them. I'm not sure, like sometimes what they make for the show doesn't necessarily equate to what comes out for retail. So I'd be interested to see these in person. Also the models are like seven feet tall. So they're probably all wear a size 10. Um, and just sometimes when you see a shoe in a size eight versus a size 10, it looks a little different, but I love the big bow, but I just, it, it looks a little wide and flat. So we'll see. TBD. This was one of my favorite looks. Uh, it's kind of like, page boy with the mini skirt. I love the contrast of this apple candy apple green and the lilac. I think it's really rich and I, the hats are kind of getting to me. I'm like, am I going to wear a newsboy cap for real, for real? But I guess if it's cold enough, it might, might make sense. Okay. So now we have a few knits. You can see that in this collection, we've really stayed away so far from the logo ho. This is again, Cher Horowitz, Legally Blonde, very wearable both as separates and together, but you'll notice this houndstooth is all sequin beaded and I feel like probably by hand. So just look out for that. Uh, the shorts, I don't know if those, it's a stripe on the sweater or suspenders. The hat kind of ruined this look for me. It was a little newsboy, but I do like the colors, the contrast of the colors. Okay, this next look. This is another one I really love. I love that you can wear it either as like a dress or a jacket over a dress or just like a jacket if it's really cold. I like that it's masculine but still feminine. Like I like the androgyny and I love this model. So anything that Jill wears, I'm here for, into it. Again, we have the hand-sewn flower applique, beautiful. And then you see this um, skirt or short. I know it's a skirt. This skirt is the same fabric as this jacket. And so that is the sustainability piece. I know people will roll their eyes with sustainability and all of that stuff and say, are you kidding me? Chanel's all about consumption. It's not really eco. They're just doing it to cut, cut costs and cut corners. Not with Métier Da. They are not cutting costs or cutting corners here. Like this is a really expensive handmade collection. Um, and they really do have a carbon neutral pledge. And so whether or not you think that that's worthwhile, I don't know, you can argue, I would say it's not not worthwhile. 
like there is some value to be had there. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm not against it. I'm for it. Okay. This kiss lock clutch is so cute with the shoes. Okay. The shoes are looking a little cuter. I think, are they too big? I just, I need a different view of the shoes to know full sequin dress, beautiful camellia, lots of gold belts. This jacket is really pretty. I love the contrast with the pink. And again, we have another version of that houndstooth sequin handbag. This is really stunning. And this is like buy once, wear forever. It's like a mix of structural, industrial, but then belted at the waist. It's still, it's feminine. It's giving mini skirt, like worn as a dress. Like I just love the contrasts between the things. Again, same fabric, different construction, newsboy, page boy. Okay. But the pockets have some complicated, uh, hand done embroidery on them that we cannot see that would make it a fortune. Again, another version of the same fabric, this time with a sequin dress. Like I, I love the contrast of like the menswear jacket with the sequin dress. Like I just love contrast. Is this the same fabric or slightly different? Might be the same fabric once again, but with this like hand done bib in the front. That's, that's our friend version -y. Okay, into the leather work. This is like, of course, super stunning. There's like the tea kettle sweater. Don't tell Sutton on Real Housewives. She will wear it on a first date. She'll wear a tea kettle. I don't know if you guys watch Real Housewives, but that's what it says to me. These knits, they're not for me. I can see who they're for and they would look really stunning and cool on that person, but they're not for me. What is for me is there is a barrette on this model says Chanel. It's so chic. I love it. I love this necklace. And then these bangles have like printed images of um, the vintage chiclet necklaces on them. So it's made to look like the old school, like glass chiclet necklaces, but it's printed on. So I kind of like that combination of, uh, you know, modern and vintage. Okay. Another knit. Now we're into like the very punk, edgy denim kind of thing. So it's like workwear denim meets countercultural sort of punk. I hope similar to Cruise that they fabricate a lot of these shorts and pants because as pants, I think it's like way more wearable for your everyday person in real life. Oh my gosh, my camera is going to totally shut off. I have to rush through this, this million dollar flower blouse. This is art. This is not meant to be worn by normal people. I think that this is really wearable, a dress and a cape. I know it's like who wears a cape, but this is like over a black dress, you know, like over any dress that you pull any color from this tweed in. Fantastic. Club kid, silk separates. The lining of this jacket has safety pin silk print on it and the safety pins to me it's like dual meaning for like the atelier and the tailoring but also the punk influence of music so there's that I love this outfit I am going to get this one um depending on price but I feel good about it I think it's so chic and I think it would look really good under that like giant blue blazer like the mix of like super barbie but also streetwear so these are all going to be incredibly expensive. They're all hand done. This one's safety pins and bows. Again, there's that safety pin theme. This is a homage to the sporting and soccer heritage of Manchester, which I think is so cool. There's like a few sporting examples here. It's giving Harry Potter, like this is Hufflepuff. Um, and then there was whatever, Ravenclaw. Um, Okay, team, as feared, my camera battery died. I charged it for a little bit. Let's try and wrap this up. Okay, starting the recording again in two, one. Okay, it's starting. We left off at look 64 with these leather edgy looks. We are getting through it. We're moving right along. This, I love the contrast. First of all, there's teacups embroidered all over this shirt. It has like the edgy punk look but with the bows. And then I think this is a mini 22 bag, but with like safety pins and like punk rock stuff all over it. I don't know. I want to see a closer photo of this purse. 
All right, we have back to kind of like more of the feminine style of punk. The contrast of this candy apple green with the black is so good. And then, okay, a few more dresses. And these are all about the applique details all over them. The CC, like it's all hand done. I can already tell you that this purse, this detailing of this, the sequins all over here, it's gonna be out of this world, beautiful and expensive. The bodice of this top, same. This top, okay, I love. It alludes to the music industry. I think it also pays homage to the Karl Lagerfeld designs that he did for Chloe. It's avant-garde, it's stunning. And I think any whatever actress, musician, famous person wearing this on the red carpet is going to look incredible. And I love this record menagerie, so cute. Also, these are the models from the beginning. This model, this model, and the next one, all walked two different looks and then walked these final looks in the finale. Obviously this alludes to the club scene in Manchester. Uh, I think this is like a really wearable set actually. It's like sexy, edgy, cool. And then you can also mix it up with separates like the sequin skirt with a Chanel tweed jacket. It could give it a totally different life and look. I love that. Okay, and then another stunning dress to end the runway. I think that was the last look. Okay, I'm gonna end the recording here. You guys, I really liked this collection. I feel like I don't know, the comparisons to Carl need to stop because Virginie totally has her own DNA and own way of doing things. Um, but I am really drawn to it. There are a bunch of looks in here. I'm interested to find out the pricing with Metier Doll. You never really know how the pricing is gonna be. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you appreciated the analysis. I hope you enjoyed nerding out with me over some of these fashion, whatever, nerd details. And I hope you all having a great day. Okay, let me know what you thought about the collection down below. My camera's gonna die again. Okay, bye.